Now that we've discussed the theory of Ethernet trunking, in this video we want to do some configuration. Specifically, we've got three goals for this demonstration. We want to create a trunk interconnecting a couple of uh, Cisco Catalyst switches. And as part of that, we want to play with uh, some different trunk modes to check out their behaviors. Then we want to see how to change the native VLAN on a trunk. Recall that a native VLAN on a .1Q trunk is the one and only one VLAN on that trunk that does not have those four extra tag bytes that say, hey, you belong to this VLAN. So if we receive an untagged frame, we know it belongs to the native VLAN. And finally, we're going to see how we can selectively prune off specific VLANs from that trunk. Maybe we don't want our engineering traffic, for example, to go across this trunk link. Now let's go out to the live interface and set things up. In this topology, we're using a couple of VLANs. VLAN 10, which is assigned to engineering, and VLAN 20, which is assigned to the HR department. And each of those VLANs contains a PC and a server. And each PC wants to get to the server in its VLAN. However, the servers, they're connected to switch SW2, while the PCs are connected to switch SW1. How can traffic for both VLANs travel between those switches? Well, we're going to see in this demonstration how we can allow each PC to reach its respective server by setting up a trunk connection between SW1 and SW2 that permits traffic for both VLANs to flow over that trunk. And to begin, let's confirm that neither PC1 nor PC2 can reach its server because we don't yet have a trunk set up. I'm on PC1 right now and we'll do a ping to 192.168.1.200. And nothing's happening. It looks like we have 100% packet loss. No surprise, we didn't expect that to work. For PC2, let's try to ping its server in VLAN 20. Let's see if we can ping 172.16.1.200. And we cannot. Again, we get 100% packet loss. Now let's configure that link between SW1 and SW2 to be a .1Q trunk. On switch SW1, let's go into global configuration mode and into the interface that's going to be on one side of that trunk. It's interface gig 0 slash 0. And even though some switches today only support .1Q encapsulation for trunking, I want to make sure and hard code it here. If the command is allowed, it might not be allowed on your switch. But I want to hard code it if I can because I don't want to inadvertently negotiate the use of the ISL, the inter-switch link encapsulation method. So I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation. Let's give some context sensitive help. And we see that we could select .1Q, which is what we're going to do. We could select ISL. We don't want to do that. It's got a lot of extra header. It's Cisco proprietary. We probably want to use .1Q today. Or we could negotiate. The issue is a lot of times if you don't specify this and you allow negotiation, you're going to end up with an ISL trunk. So I'm going to specify .1Q. And I'm going to tell this port, be a trunk. I'm not negotiating with the other end to form a trunk. I'm just going to go to both ends initially and say, be a trunk. And to do that, I can say, switch port mode trunk. And we're done with our configuration on SW1. Let's go give a similar configuration on SW2. We'll go into global configuration mode. And for interface gig 0 slash 0, we'll say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. And I'm going to tell it to be a trunk by setting the switch port mode to trunk. And we're done. Let's see if we have a trunk. Let's do a show interfaces trunk command. And that will show us if we have any configured trunks. It will show us the mode we're using. We just said, all right, turn on trunking. We're using dot one Q encapsulation. And our status is currently trunking. And our native VLAN, the VLAN that does not contain a tag, is VLAN 1. And right now, VLANs that are allowed and active on the switch include VLAN 1. That's our default VLAN. We cannot delete that. VLAN 10, which is for engineering. VLAN 20, which is for HR. And I also created before this demonstration, VLAN 900. Later in this demonstration, we're going to say, let's use that VLAN as our new native VLAN. But nothing special about it. I just said VLAN 900 and created it. But those are the four active VLANs we have on the switch. And let's confirm this trunk is working by going to our PCs and seeing if they can reach their servers. Can I ping server 1? Yes, I can. What about on PC 2? Can I ping server 2? Yes, I can. 
So we know that traffic is successfully crossing that dot one q trunk. Now let's experiment with some of those different trunking modes. Currently, each end of the link is configured in the trunk mode of trunk. Well, let's leave SW1's configuration as is, set to trunk, and let's go over to SW2, and we'll go into global configuration mode, and we'll say interface gig 0 slash 0, and let's change its trunking mode. Let's say switch port mode. This time, we'll say dynamic. Let's use some context-sensitive help, and we could say auto or desirable, remembering that desirable will form a trunk if it receives DTP frames, but it will also initiate the sending of those DTP frames. Auto is more passive. Auto says, if I receive DTP frames, then yes, I'm willing to form a trunk, but I'm not going to initiate anything. Let's try both. Let's begin with desirable, and let's see if we have a trunk. Let's do a show, interfaces, trunk, and we do. It says our status is trunking and our mode is desirable. The reason that trunk came up was because switch SW1 was set to the trunking mode of trunk and that mode will initiate the sending of DTP frames. Switch2 heard that and said, all right, let's do it. Let's be a trunk. And this trunk was brought up. Now, what do you think will happen if I change the mode to dynamic auto? Let's check it out. Let's go back into global configuration mode and back into interface gig 0 slash 0. And we'll say this time, switch port mode dynamic auto. Do you think we still have a trunk? Let's do a show interfaces trunk command. And we do. It says our status is trunking and our mode is auto. And that's because even though auto doesn't initiate the sending of DTP frames, it will see the DTP frames and it's willing to become a trunk. And that's what's happened here. And let's try one more combination. We've got dynamic auto set on switch two. What about setting dynamic auto on both ends? Let's go back into switch SW1 into global configuration mode and into interface configuration mode for gig zero slash zero. And I'm gonna say switch port mode dynamic auto. Now, do you think we have a trunk? Let's see. Show interfaces trunk. We do not. And the reason is, both sides are set to dynamic auto. They're both willing to become a trunk, but no one is suggesting they become a trunk. So they're just passively waiting for the other side of the link, and that invitation is never going to come. Now let's get this trunk functioning again and try a couple of other things. Let's go back into gig 0 slash 0, and I'll set this into dynamic desirable. And that should bring up our trunk. Let's do a show interfaces trunk command, and we are up and trunking once again. And notice the default native VLAN is one, and in some of Cisco's security best practice recommendations, they suggest changing your native VLAN to something else. And please make this distinction, this trips a lot of people up, the native VLAN doesn't mean default VLAN. The default VLAN is the VLAN to which a port will belong by default unless we assign it somewhere else, and that is VLAN 1, and we cannot delete VLAN 1, ever. And it just so happens that the native VLAN also defaults to 1, but we can change the native VLAN, and I'm going to change it to VLAN 900. And for everything to function properly, we need the native VLANs on each end of this link to match. But let's go into switch SW1, and into interface gig 0 slash 0 again, and let's change the native VLAN to 900. I'll say switch port, trunk, native VLAN, and I'm going to make it 900. Remembering that before the demonstration, I already created VLAN 900. So that does exist. I'm going to end that. Now let's go over to switch SW2, and let's go into interface gig 0 slash 0, and I'll say switch port, trunk, native, VLAN 900. We've now made that match on each end of the link. Let's do a show, interfaces, trunk command, and we're now told that our native VLAN is 900. Great. And that does match on SW1. Let's confirm that. Show interfaces trunk. And here we also have a native VLAN of 900. And here on switch SW1, we saw earlier that we're allowing the default VLAN of 1, the engineering VLAN of 10, the HR VLAN of 20, and VLAN 900, which is now our native VLAN. But let's say that we want to prune off one or more VLANs from this trunk. 
Maybe for security reasons, we don't want HR information going over the trunk. Or you might be in a situation where there's just no need for HR traffic to go over that trunk because maybe there are no other devices on VLAN 20 available after we cross that trunk. Now, that's not our situation here. We have Server 2 on the other end of that trunk. So if we prune off VLAN 20 from this trunk, PC2 should no longer be able to reach Server 2 while PC1 should still be able to reach Server 1. Here's one way to prune off a VLAN. We can go into Global Configuration Mode and then into Interface Configuration Mode for Gig 0 slash 0. And one approach is to say, here are the allowed VLANs, give a list of VLANs, and omit any VLANs that you don't want to permit. I'm going to say, Switch Port Trunk Allowed VLAN, and I can separate discontiguous VLANs with commas, and I'll say I want to allow VLAN 1, my native VLAN. I want to allow VLAN 10, my engineering VLAN. And I want to allow VLAN 900, my native VLAN. And let's enter that. Now let's see what VLANs are allowed over this trunk. Let's do a show interfaces trunk command again. And now our allowed and active VLANs are VLANs 1, 10, and 900. The ones that we explicitly specified. VLAN 20 is gone. That means PC2 should no longer be able to reach Server 2, but PC1 should still be able to reach Server 1. Let's make sure that's the case. Let's go back to PC1. Can I ping Server 1? Hopefully I can. And yes, that is successful. What about PC2? Can I ping Server 2? Well, its VLAN is disallowed from that trunk now. We pruned it off. So the answer is no, and the ping is going to fail. Let's break out of that. And that confirms for us that VLAN 20 traffic cannot flow over this trunk. Now let's get rid of the command we used to accomplish that. Let's allow everyone once again. Let's go back into interface gig 0 slash 0. And I'll just negate that command by putting a no in front of it. That should allow all of our VLANs now. And I want to show you another way that we could exclude VLAN. This time, let's exclude VLAN 10. And before, we gave a list of allowed VLANs. Here, I can give a list of denied VLANs. I can say, allow everyone, except, and then give one or more VLANs that are the exceptions, that are going to be pruned off. Here's how we do that. I say, switch port, trunk, allowed, VLAN, except. And I want to allow everyone except VLAN 10. Let's enter that. And if I do a show, interfaces trunk command, You'll see it gives me a list of all possible VLANs, 1 through 9. We skip over 10, and then we do 11 through 4094. That's what's allowed, but not all of those VLANs are active. Here's what we have that are allowed and active. VLANs 1, 20, and 900. We have now pruned off VLAN 10. To confirm that, let's go to PC1, and we should now not be able to get to Server 1. We'll give it a few seconds, and it is failing. So let's break out of that. However, this time, if we go to PC2, we should be able to reach Server 2, and we can. And that is a look at Ethernet trunking. Specifically in this video, we saw how to create a trunk and how our dynamic modes could help us with that. Then we saw how we could change a trunk's native VLAN. And finally, we considered two approaches to pruning off one or more VLANs from that trunk.